I'm inside and I saw Memories of Murder. It is directed by Bong Joon-ho, written by Bong Joon-ho and Shim Sung-bo. And if you haven't seen this movie, I will spoil it for you. This came out in 2003. It does not look like it came out in 2003. Just wanted to start the review off just saying that. This movie starts when we're finding a lady in some sort of ditch but it's covered i don't know what to call that a storm drain yeah there's a lady and she's been dead and she's been raped and that's no good and of course this is the first case of something like this happening in the area so the popo don't know what to do they're really sloppy with their investigation they're sloppy with collecting evidence and we have this one particular man last name is park i like that guy he seems to be very confused he seems to be very overwhelmed with this case because, oh boy, there's a lot more of these women getting murdered that happens throughout the rest of the movie and he literally can't handle it. I'll explain more what that means later. Who is a suspect? Well, of course it has to be that retarded kid who's following one of the victims, right? Well, at least that's their logic. They beat him until they get a false confession out of him on tape yeah i did the murders i did this particular thing that only a police officer would be able to describe to me and i'm yeah i totally did that i totally did that and the freaking chief the chief of police i feel so bad for him he has to deal with these hooligans just messing it up messing up the investigation doing it terribly and poorly and wrong he's like are you torturing them? Are you giving them bad times so they give you a confession just so you're done with your job? And this is not good practice because the real killer would still be out there. And that is something I don't want to think about because what if they killed me when I was wearing red and it was raining and a particular song on the radio played? I mean, I'm not in Korea, but you know, I still have fears. I'm still scared. Oh my goodness, that could happen to me. That could be me. Park just saw Cho beating that poor retard, man. He's not doing anything wrong. I feel bad for him because he's just crying and he doesn't know exactly why he's here and he doesn't know why he's being beaten up and i hope 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 he doesn't remember what happens here if he does remember what happened here he's going to be traumatized for the rest of his life and i don't know how he's going to deal with that so i feel for that kid luckily he is released and a new person comes in town a new investigator uh from seoul i think that's the city I don't know how to pronounce it. Seo. His name is Seo. I'm not Korean, so all of these are going to be very butchered. I'm very much actually not good at English at all. So I'm going to butcher all other languages just, just to let you know. This guy is my favorite. He is my favorite out of these investigators. I think this movie mostly follows from my perspective. It follows the chief, it follows Park, Cho, and Seo. And CEO is big brain investigator. He has a head on his shoulders. He's not letting Parks and Cho's very goofy antics stop him from investigating, collecting evidence, trying to figure out what's behind all of this. Also, I love, I'm gonna call this a nipple rubbing match that they get into because a, a Park and Cho, since they're just here, they're just chilling. They're like, oh man, just any Korean cop can just walk around and find somebody. Americans have to use their brains because they found a piece of evidence and there's like a semen on some sort of clothing and they sent it to America. This is later on in the movie, but I just thought of it because, oh man, I love the building tension between the three of them actually, the, the out-of-towner cop versus the two in-towner cops. And there's building tension, but I mention this now because, oh yeah, the, the Americans have to use their big old brains because they got a lot of land. It was specifically about the land, the amount of land that they had that I thought was interesting. Versus you could literally just walk across Korea. It's like 100 miles, I guess. I don't know how big Korea is, but I do know how big America is. And America is massive. Going from one side 
of the country to another. It takes about like 40 hours, 44 hours. I would know because I've done that drive <laughs> a couple of times actually, oops. I bring this up just because I like their feud. And also thinking about how much I've traveled America. Why am I including this in my memories of murder review? Oh, they mentioned America, one America one bit. And then they, I just had to think about America. Thanks movie. Back to the movie. They made the connection. Oh, red and rain plus song equals death. Wow, let's have it so our policewoman, who is by the way, very pretty. It doesn't seem like any of the dudes really care about her though, which is a shame because she seems bright on her own. She is bait. It doesn't work. I'm like, oh boy, maybe the killer isn't very hungry right now. Maybe he's not hungry for a murderin', which is weird. I don't know how often murderers would murder. What I would assume would be any time that they wanted to and not just any old person that just shows up who's wearing red in the rain. I mentioned the song earlier, the song that's played on the radio every time a murder happens when it's raining. And I mentioned this woman because she has called the radio station. She has gotten the address to where this person who was requesting the song constantly where they live because they have an address and they go to that address and look nobody's there the person who actually lives there since they're sibling their aunts i didn't catch the relationship here their pal was like oh they're working at the factory and you know want to know why this is significant because i'm jumping all over the place in this review i just really like how much detail there is within this movie and how much detail is strewn across the movie because probably 40 50 minutes in Forget the exact timestamp, but it's around there. We first see the glimpse of the killer. This happens directly after the cop lady is sent out as bait. But actually we're seeing another lady who's wearing red, but she has like some sort of like tarp over her, but she's wearing some red. She's wearing a tiny bit of red. And oh my goodness, somebody's head just pops out of the fields. And the way that this is shot, right? Camera's moving and the background's blurred out. And so this focus is of the character, but because of the way the eye works, so if you see something in your periphery, you see movement, you're going, oh, something's moving over there. And oh my goodness, it's that guy. Oh my goodness, it's him. Before I get to the big reveal though, of this guy in the factory, there is, <laughs> this part is really funny. Before they found the guy in the factory, they're still snooping around. They went to this spot where the crime scene was committed and freaking show was scammed with like a charm. Random lady, like on the street, I'm just walking here. And she's like, oh, do you need help with your charm or something? I forget exactly how the interaction works, but it was so perfectly done because he just seems like the type of character to get scammed easily like he is dumb it seems like there is an intelligence gap between the three investigators obviously the out-of-town investigator is the smartest out of the three and then park is the middle and then chose like the dumbest and chose the type to really really yell really get into his feelings really fight whenever it's necessary which i really like that about his character but they're at a forest okay they're at a forest and in this forest comes a man he drops all this lady's lingerie on the floor and then undoes his pants. You see his red panties. He starts jerking off onto it. And then somebody spooks him. And so he's like, oh, I gotta go. But then they all jump out at him and they run towards this really busy working place where they're digging a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of men there, there's, there's a whole site. And then that guy gets questioned. And then that guy gets tortured into a false confession. The same methods that happened to the other ones that got false confessioned. Oh man. Oh, <laughs> oh man, I really starting to hate Park and Show. It really seems like CO is really just not caring that much. He did give a bigger fuss earlier in the movie, but not as much as a bigger fuss now. I guess, but it's fun to seeing this guy. He's like, fine, I've been in here for four days. I would like to just confess, okay? And meanwhile, there's a freaking protest because that's the most honest guy, actually. And the police officer's like, oh, damn, man, that uh, guy sucks, doesn't he? The most honest men are usually the creepiest. <laughs> it's like, dude, he just wanted to jerk off in the forest onto some ladies' lingerie. What's wrong with that? Obviously, he didn't want to do it near his sick wife, who's coughing all the time. Oh, man, their house is really small, and 
all the houses are really small, actually, that they're going to. All the places they're going to are really small. And then I realized watching this movie, like, wow, Korea is really dense. Like, dense in population. I've never been to Korea before. If you've ever been to Korea ever, let me know if this is true. What's fun about this movie is seeing the human relationships just break down more and more. Siyu just really wants this to be done. Park and Chow also wants this to be done, Cho, which is honestly, ugh, I get it, I get it. It's just weird how this guy keeps on murdering. Okay, I have teased you long enough. Let's go back to the guy at the factory. So obviously they go to this guy, and this guy is kind of like a, like a geek looking guy he's wearing a turtleneck his hands are soft and there is this one live person just because they didn't see his face they didn't get killed which was how <sighs> crazy anyways she is describing his hands being soft and so this guy has soft hands these police officers are convinced that this man has done did it they're so convinced that this man has done did it that they literally take him out to the train tracks and on the train tracks they're in the rain they're beating this guy up. I would just love if you could just say that you'd killed him, please. <laughs> Obviously this guy seems more and more innocent. I honestly thought he was really guilty at the very beginning. When I first saw him, I was like, yeah, that guy's guilty. But the more and more that he is, the more and more that he shows his personhood, the more and more like, yeah, I don't think this guy could have killed anyone. I honestly think the police officers are more responsible for one of these murders than this guy is right here. Want to know why? Because that guy, the super honest dude guy that was locked up in super honest, yeah, that guy was uh, having a little protesters and protesters equal police and all the police officers were dealing with the protesters when another murder had happened. And just too late, I think if those freaking police officers just let that guy go sooner, then those police officers dealing with the protesters wouldn't have any protesters to deal with and would have saved that girl. But no, they did the murder. They murdered that girl. I mean, not quite literally, but it's just fun to say that. Back to the punching a innocent man on the train tracks in the rain scene. Yeah, he punches him until, oh wow, a train comes, we gotta save him. And that guy's saved and then he's gone. And I'm like, oh, okay, that guy's clearly not done, did it? Who else could it be? It seems like everyone here has lost hope because we haven't found who it was. All of our leads, all of our witnesses, gone. Oh yeah, by the way, that retired still saw the witness and I'm saying retired because I am autistic and I am retarded, okay? I feel for him, he's spooked. He gets spooked, he gets on the train tracks, he doesn't notice the train's about to hit him, and the detective's trying to get him to get off the tracks, but he's running from the detective. He's like, oh my goodness, it's you! And then we see him get hit by a train. And I'm like, no! Oh no, this is so sad. So that retard saw his good old pal friend that he was obsessed with, the chick who was a victim. He saw her get absolutely murdered and kind of saw the murderer, but not really. He described him as handsome, which is interesting, which is a fun, interesting detail, which will apply later in the movie. And now their witness is gone, their key witness is gone. Quite insane that they have no more leads. 10 years later, we have Park, happy as a businessman. He's selling juicers. I want a juicer. It was a cool shot of just him sitting next to the juicers and made me want a juicer. Anyway, he's like, oh, stop here. Okay, I'm gonna go to that original place, that place in that hole where those crimes happened all those years ago. And a little lady comes up. She's like, hi, what are you doing? I saw a man who was also looking that hole. He's talking about what things he did in that hole. And Park was like, do you see his face? Because no one has seen his face previously. This lady did. She said, yes, he looked ordinary. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ordinary, that makes sense. You gotta be able to blend in and if you wanna do a murdering. This is a great movie. I've described it so much in detail. You can probably tell how much I really love this movie. There's uh, so much nuance, so much emotionality. I felt for all of the police officers and I feel for all of them. And I really like this movie. If you haven't seen this movie, you definitely gotta watch it because my review of it, I don't think has done proper service. The cinematic genius, the story genius of Bong Joon-ho. Oh my goodness, this is so good. I love the acting. There's a lot of emotion. I like the shots. They're very pretty, very well done. I could just gush about this movie f forever, but I'd rather give it 
a solid 8.8 8 out of 10. If you like this review, watch another one. If the platform really likes that. If you want a fast track and movie review, you can do that for $20 dinos at patreon.com slash ASU Presents. And if you'd like to help support the daily grind of all them daily movie reviews, go to this link tree. Find the way you can help support the daily grind of all them daily movie reviews so you can go here. And until next time, inside, I'll see you later my side recruits on Big Bits.